What's up, everybody? Good morning. Tuesday, June 20th, and we're going to talk about getting your mind right. Um, I had a special guest. I don't know where he's at. He's running late. Hopefully, he shows up here in a couple minutes. But uh, first off, what's going on, guys? Uh, today, I, w- I just want to talk about getting your mind right. I came in here. I got a zillion things going on, um, and, and today's uh, John here picked a topic about getting your mind right when there's a million things rushing through my mind. So I'm going to talk about the importance of why you have to have your mind right. Here's the deal. My mind... Yes, it can get clouded, it can jaded. We all go through some stuff, but for the for the main part, the reason why I stay accountable, the reason why I write my goals, the reason why I keep the focus in front of me in the forefront of my future and why I do this is because and why I can do this is because my mind for the most part is 95% clear of all clutter and all stuff. Yes, business comes in, relationships, fathering, um, ups, downs, tribulation, just like you guys happens. But for the most part, if you stay on the course and you stay consistent, one thing I find is the most successful people that I come across, whether they're a construction worker, whether they own a business, whether whatever, just success in their life, they all are constant. There's always a constant flow of, of positivity or, or um, looking into the future and making sure that their mind's right. So that's kind of what I want to talk about. Why is it important to keep your mind right? Like, what is the importance of it? Because I did three, four coaching calls yesterday um, where these guys think that they can't close a deal or they think there's something going on in their life or they think something else. Is, is wrong in their structure, wrong in their road to the sale, wrong in their sales game. But the truth is it's actually all starts back. If we if we reverse engineer and we go backwards, we can always pinpoint something that's off, right? It starts in their mind because the truth is if your mind's not right and you can't focus through all the shit, all the things going on every day, how are you supposed to do your job properly? How are you supposed to operate on a level of peak performance? How are you supposed to stay in peak state to get where you want to be if you can't operate with your mind right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through a couple different um, five steps or so. I'm just going to go straight through and actually do like a teaching thing of the things that I sit, that I go through every day and the importance of keeping my mind right. So let me just look here real quick at some of the notes we got. Um, how do you get your mind right? So it basically comes down. I have a four the four pillars. If you're on my program, you can check it out. But I'm going to tell you five steps and we're going to break them down, okay? Make a decision. Believe that you can achieve, accountability, schedule, and this is the most important one in my opinion, cut negativity. I just, Tyler um, Tyler and I, he's one of my students, we just had a, a call about the negativity and, and the huddle and the people being around you and the surroundings and the shit that comes in your life and how do you cut that and how do you to- tolerate that. So I'm going to break these down, okay, for a couple minutes here. Number one, make a decision. Doesn't matter what it is okay and here's the thing if it's a decision if it's a big decision maybe it's a a move to a new dealership maybe it's um a relationship that's not right for you i'm not saying with a girlfriend or significant other maybe it's a relationship with a friend that that's holding you back or something that's you feel is not laying out with your you know with your morals with who you are these big decisions these big fat juicy decisions you've got to make them you got to move on so you have to tell yourself you're going to commit to the mindset right now. So we're going to talk about that right now. The first step always is make the decision. When I made the decision to get my mind right, I wasn't even sure. I talk about this over and over. I made the decision, but I was scared. I was I was like, fuck, I don't really know if I can make this decision. I, I committed to it, but I started, fear gets in the way. And these things start second guessing yourself. And you start going, man, I don't know if this is the right decision. I don't know if I can really do this. Like I'm holding myself to a higher level here. Is this the right decision? The truth is you just have to stick with it. Once you get that decision made, you can't go backwards on it. There is no going back, right? I don't care if your life sucked to this point. I don't care if things were hard or somebody did you wrong or or, uh, the decision or you can't beat the addiction or, or, or life is just coming at you hard. You have to make the decision every time and stick with it. Oftentimes, I go back, I'm like, fuck, man, is this even the... Even where I'm at right now, did did this decision to get clean and sober, was it the right one? When my friends are turning it up on a weekend and, and they're having fun and I got a text today from my friends that says, let's go on the boat this weekend. Sure, they can drink a couple beers and hang out. But I asked myself, is this the right decision for me that I made to be clean and sober, to, to start supporting you guys, to start pushing away all the negativity? Is this the right decision? Absolutely. I have to stand by it. Doesn't mean it's not going to be easy, ever, that it's going to be the easiest decision every day. I look back all the time, right? I know I said I know that you're not supposed to, but it's hard at times to not look back. And be like, man, I really want to go out and party. I really want to go out and have a good time. I really want to sometimes go back and sell cars because, fuck, it's easy. It's super easy. But I don't. I, I made a decision to try to change the world. I made a decision to try to gain a following. I made a decision to have this message put out in front of you guys. So first step, make a decision. 
Here's one that gets a little bit difficult. We had a, ta- a call about this the other night. And it actually was this morning I had a guy. He asked about, we were talking about finances um, and the ability, like when you're down and out, you know, I've been down out many times. And this was the question that I asked him. Do you believe that you can achieve it? Do you believe that you have it inside of you to be able to control your own financial destiny, right? This is off of getting your mind right. But how often do you truly believe in that conviction? Are you truly believing that that decision that you have? So I know in my, in my life, regardless of how stressed out things get, and I have to get my mind right, a lot of my times my mind gets clouded from financial, right? Because I've got all these moving pieces going on. I love to make money. I love to sell. I love to help people. But at the same time, at the end of the day, I do things that I'm trying to create a profit. I'm trying to create a financial wall of freedom so high around my family that, I, that it's never going to break down, right? So we're going to talk about that. Do I believe that I can achieve that? Do I believe that I can actually help you guys with your car sales? I tell you, absolutely fucking loot there. Do I had three phone calls, three three calls today on the way here of people just thanking me? They just want to call and thank me. Usually they're just calling, be like, hey, uh, you know, I got an issue. I'm going through this. But I had three people that called and say, man, because of your course, because of the actions you take, because of the things that you put out there, my mind is right. I became a better person. I'm a better, I'm a better spouse. I'm better in my job. People are looking up to me right now, and things are good. So. They're believing they can achieve it, which in turn makes me believe I can achieve my goal. So that's step number two. Believe that you can achieve anything. And if you don't think you can achieve it, ask yourself and write it down. Why can't I achieve this? Why am I different than anybody else? You're not. You can have anything that you want, truly. The only limitations that are set, there there really is no limitations in life. Only what's set by you up here by not having your mind right. You're the one that doesn't think you can do it, you're going to lose. If you think you can, you can. If you can't, it is what it is. All right, step number three, accountability. It sounds like my phone's ringing over there. Accountability. How this is this is oftentimes a little bit a little bit of a struggle. Okay, how do I hold myself accountable for certain things? How do I, um, you know, how do I set up these precautions? How do I make sure that I don't go down the route? Right? How do I keep my mind right to be accountable? How do I make sure I go to the gym every day? How do I make sure, like, like how, what am I going to do? Dude, I lay out a, a schedule, which is the next one we're going to talk about. The accountability, though, you have to come up with something that makes you feel good. Often we're working, you know, and, and we're working on getting our mind right, working on these things. But what are the two or three things that you can do? Or what's one thing you can do every day that you must do every day to hold yourself accountable? For me, it has to, to get my mind right. It starts before I even do it. It starts before I even step into foot to, to sell something, to be the CEO of my company, to build this future. I got I to gotta go to the gym. I've got to feel right. I've got, if my body's not right, my mind's not right. So that's one thing that I do every day to hold accountable. Maybe you don't want to lift, right? Not everybody wants to lift weights and everybody wants to do cardio, but maybe it's you need to read 20 minutes every day. Maybe it's you need to go for a walk 20. Maybe you need to go out and meditate on a pier, get up a little bit early. What is something that you can do to hold yourself accountable? Because then the habit's going to start, the habit's going to change, and it's going to hold you accountable. And then let's talk about the next part, the schedule. Guy called me today and he was like, man, I don't really know. I'm making a bunch of phone calls, but I don't know if I'm making the right calls for the right decisions for what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm just, I'm just, well, I want to bang my head off the desk. Literally is what he told me. I want to fucking smash my head off the desk. I made all these calls and nobody's answering. Well, here's the thing. You've got to break up the schedule. We, we often talk about no white space on the calendar, none of this, none of that. But you got to be able to break it down. To, to So what I did, let's just talk about not even the work related stuff, but it's, from four to five, I'm making my meals. From five to six, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm uh, going to work out or I'm going to do my training or whatever. And the reason that I work this schedule is because if you set into motion from the time you get up and you get up a little bit earlier, which sucks at times, but you get up and you start operating, you realize you put in two, three hours of hard work on yourself before the day even starts, I guarantee it you're going to become the best version of yourself in a short period of time. So the, and like, like John here who makes my notes, he wrote back, how can it help your accountability? Absolutely. Once you put into places, the things that you want to be accountable for into the schedule, it just reverse engineers and works it right. If you don't have a schedule, I literally this morning, someone texted me at six 30, if Phoenix can come to a birthday party on July 5th. Right. I mean, it was an early text message, but ask me, can you come to a, uh, can you come to a birthday party at July 5th? I literally worked that into my schedule to make sure that I'm going to be there. Cause they asked me to stay and chaperone it for four hours or whatever. I'm going to put it in my schedule. It's going to affect my day, but there's still certain things I need to do to be accountable to make sure that I'm giving him the best life. So what I'm saying is plan everything, right? That's simple. And now we get to talk about the most important one of all. Cutting the fucking negativity out. 
And oftentimes, sometimes like the negative stuff can be in your head. It can be here, right? I just told Kevin, I was walking around pace. I'm a little bit of a fucking freak. I'm not going to lie. It is what it is. I don't care what people think. I'm kind of a psycho. But I get in my mind sometimes. I get in these things. And it's not just negativity sometimes. It's, sometimes it's the overwhelming thoughts of the desire to want more, to achieve more, that you're getting pushed. Like if you don't have this reason to being – I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. But if you can't find this purpose, this passion, these things inside that makes your heart beat – then your mind will start getting filled with some negativity. Man, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I can't do that. Maybe something's off. Maybe, you know, maybe this, your wife, your spouse, your boyfriend, your husband, whoever's watching this, maybe, maybe they're telling you that you can't have that stuff for whatever reason. But the reason is because they don't believe in themselves. They haven't bought into the life that you're buying into and they're just not feeling it. So let's talk about different things and negative in the dealership about getting your mind right. Actually, there's one, one thing I want to talk about and that's the fucking huddle, Right. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, I even see my guy John and Kevin and those guys get in a huddle here sometimes, right? Not saying it's a negative huddle, but they, they get in these little meetings and they talk about it. They're guilty of it. We all are at some point here in the office because we're friends. But in your store, the negative huddle is where the most crap comes from. You can go in there right now to find out how not to sell, how to be an asshole to your customer, how not to, how not to fill your pipeline, find out what's going on with uh, the Mayweather, the Mayweather uh, McGregor fight that's coming up. You can find everything that you want about a shitty life inside that huddle right now. So that's for you. Get off this live and get over there, man. Get yourself excited to lose. But if you don't, if you want to cut the negativity out and you want it going on, and this was the question that Tyler said, he goes, what do you do when you cut, when these people, you know, you didn't want to hang out with them? I'll tell you what I did. I cashed fatter checks than they did. I made double the amount of money. I sold more cars. I opened up opportunities. I got laughed at. People are like, what the fuck is Mark out making a video for? What, what is, you know, who does this guy think he is? I remember some dude telling someone saying he thinks he's really cool because he's got like 500. I didn't think I was cool. I never think I'm cool. But because I only had like minimal amounts of people that liked my shit, minimal amounts of people that were watching my stuff. And it was actually someone that's close to me. He's like, dude, he told my brother, he's like, what does he think he is? Fucking Kim Kardashian. I mean, he's got no followers. Why is he going to continue to do this? My brother's like, I remember at the time, he's like, I don't know, man. It holds him sober. It keeps him sober and accountable, right? He's just doing it. And he's being positive. Why don't you just fucking back off him? Right? That's, that's what he said. And the, but the truth is, I don't know where I was going with that, is there's going to, no matter, no matter where you're going or what you're doing, someone's going to be negative in your life, in your life because nobody really, they want to see you win. They want to see you succeed but they don't want you to succeed more than them, okay? So back to what I'm talking about. Sure, I got laughed at. Sure, they talk behind my back, but you know what those people are? And, or, or, and this is a point that I wanna talk about this morning. They're, they're out there, the people that are saying, it's just another video by Mark. It's just another, another video by Ryan Stuman. It's just another video by Grant Cardone. Just another video by Ellen Dickey. Just another video by Jonathan Dawson. Just another video by Sean Hayes, right? Because Sean started to make some good videos. These guys are putting out the, 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 they're just putting out there. You motherfuckers are the ones that need to hear it. You guys are the ones that don't, that don't want to watch it. Or you guys are the ones that need it more than the rest of us out here that are trying to do it. So my answer about cutting the negativity to, to, to Tyler, when he talked to me about this morning is I don't care if you don't like me, block me. If you don't want to watch me, you don't want to be my friend. It's not going to hurt me. I know in a, most likely in a physical man-to-man -man fight, you're not going to say the same thing to my, cell, to my face, right? Anybody can be a keyboard warrior. Anybody can talk shit behind your back because that's what weak people do. And you guys are not weak that are watching this. Cut the negativity out. Cut that bullshit out. Keep pushing. I know I said a lot of swears today. I don't know why. But maybe this should, <laughs> it is what it is. So, it, oh, I'll tell one more. I mean, there's, we, got this, we got this video, or not this video. We got this uh, text message from some guy said that I can't sell shit. I can't hold this jock strap. I can't do all these things and Jacob likes to periodically text them back to see what's going on. But I go through and I read these things and I look at this dude's this dude's page or whatever and I don't, I'm not going to talk shit but I'm like, dude, you really have time. Like you should you should really focus on you. You should really focus on what you're going on instead of trying to cut me apart. Because the truth is, bro, I'm 10 times the man you are. And the reason I'm the man is because I don't care what you do. And just like you guys need to understand right now, when you're focused on your family, when you're focused on your future, when you're focused on God, when you're focused on, on, on just bringing in an income for, for you that works for you, when you're focused on the life, none of that stuff matters. I can visually see myself right now at the dealership remembering people laugh at me who now want to shake my hand and say, I love what you said out there. And so that saying that Grant made about, I don't know if he was the one that made it, but hustle until your haters ask for a job. We've had that happen over here already a couple times. I've already had people who laughed, chastised me, 
said I was never going to make it, said I don't deserve it. Who does this guy think he is? Ask me for a job. Ask me for advice and ask me for help. So my point to you guys is, and maybe I went off on a little bit of a tangent on this one, but I don't care. I'm going to close with this. Completely figure out how you can eliminate every distraction that's holding you back. Every piece of crap that's filling in your life, cut it. And if that means taking, and, I, and this is very rare, if that means taking two, three, four hours to go sit by a tree and write it down, write down all these things that are affecting you and crumple them up and throw them away. If that means figuring out how you can go spend time, quality time with somebody that loves you, take a little bit of a break so you can get your mind right. So you can go out and close the life and, 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 and remember that we have this life that we're building. Don't get, you know, that, that saying, don't get so busy building life. You forget you have a life is exactly true here. So we're going to wrap it up with these things. Make a decision. Believe you can achieve. Hold yourself accountable. Build that schedule and cut negativity. You guys have a great day. Talk to you guys soon.